Hello, everybody, and welcome to part three of the Commerce Extension series. Today's topic is Migrate POS Extension to the new independent POS SDK. My name is Michaela, and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. The session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By agreeing, you're enjoy you're, by joining, excuse me, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout and at the end of the presentation. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Lugan Thanbani, Senior Program Manager. Over to you. Thanks, Kendra. Yeah. Hey, hi, everyone. Welcome to the session. Yeah. In today's session, we're going to talk about how to migrate the your point of sale extension to the new Commerce SDK. So previously, we would have done some customization with the old retail sdk so in this session we'll do a deep dive on how you can migrate the point your point of sale extension to the new commerce sdk okay. so uh, i will also talk about a little bit at a high level of how you can migrate the commerce runtime and api extension but we're going to do a separate deep dive session for the co commerce runtime and headless commerce api extension similarly also the hardware station yeah okay with that let's get started yeah. The main agenda for today's session is we'll do a quick overview of like what is the extension migration process. So what should you do? Like how will you start? Starting from how to get the SDK, how to set up the development environment, and how will you begin your migration process? Then we'll cover like what components has been changed and what has been not changed. Say for example, you wrote some extensions, and now I want to move that extension. That hey, for which part I need to make a code change. And for what are the other components which I want, don't want to like, which you will not make any code changes, you just want to take it as is and then like move it to the new template. Okay. So we'll cover that part. Then Luke will do a deep dive on the migration process. Also, he will talk about like, hey, how we can do a code sharing between the retail SDK and the new SDK. Okay. Because you don't want to like, because you need to continuously support your existing stores and your existing customization, right? Till you fully migrate to the new commerce SDK. So we'll also walk through like how you can for temporarily, how you can maintain both SDK, but without duplicating the code. We don't want you to like have a separate customization for the old retail SDK as well as for the commerce SDK. So we'll walk through also like how you can maintain the code sharing between the retail SDK and the commerce SDK. Just on the terms, when I mean retail SDK, it's the old SDK. Commerce SDK is the new SDK, or it's also called as the independent packaging. We are trying to unify the name as Commerce SDK. Yeah. Okay. Then at the end, I'll quickly show like how you some of the common extension issues and how you can troubleshoot it. And then at the end, you will we will end with session takeaways and QA. So anytime if you have a question, please post it in the chat window. We'll try to answer during the session or also at the end. Yeah. Okay, so with that, I will start with the overview of the migration. Then before going to the overview process, I want to quickly spend like few, like a minute on like why it is really needed and what are the benefits. We covered this in our previous tech talk, like the overview session one and two, but just again, I want a little bit iterate, like why, what are the, why are like, what are the benefits of this migration, right? First key advantage or the benefit is the update experience. So previously with the retail SDK, you have to bundle all your extension together as one combined package, including the core out of the box components. Say for example, when we ship a hot fix, it's gonna include the out of the box MPOS, plus you then bundle all your extension as one installer, including the course. So every time when you take update, you have to do the same process, right? So it's kind of time consuming and then you have to do a merge and then set up the build pipeline to include all those changes every time, right? So you have to maintain our old retail LTK. This process takes based on from feedbacks from multiple customers and partners in a, this process easily takes like five to 10 hours every time. And then again, we have to retest. 
So we kind of, with the new SDK, we completely like improved that process. Now to update, it's going to take like, like minutes. You don't have to like, maintain go like involve a dev persona to merge all the packages. You can independently take the core out of the box MPOS and then just install it. Like however you update the existing MPOS or the other uh, channel components, you should be able to do it. So without involving any dev persona because your extension is going to independently install and, and okay. So we'll cover that later during the session. Then also the, the new SDK has like some improvements with the ASP.NET Core 3.1. We are migrating our CSU platform to the ASP.NET Core 3.1, so which is going to give you better performance, but this will work only if you have the new sub using the new extension model. Similarly, the other big benefit is like publishing the samples and the packages are now available in GitHub and the public sheet. So previously to take update, you have to go to LCS, download it, upload, apply to your dev environment, which is going to take like at least like two, three hours. And then if you have 10 dev environments, so you have to like multiply that also. So now if you want to get update, right, you can just go to the new web packet manager and then just in the drop, drop down, you can select the latest version. So it's like few seconds. Similarly, if you want to get the latest version of the samples from the GitHub, you can just do a git pull or you can just go to GitHub and view it, right? Even you don't have to clone it. There is no like dependency. So the model is now more became like a similar to a .NET development experience where you can just like see our samples or like get our packages from the public sheet and uses the standard project templates and start developing it. I will not go all the others one because we already covered this one with VS Code simplification, improved build times, and also like we automated the packaging and configurations like the commerce and time ext configs and those things you specify. Now all of those things are automated with the new SDK. The other one key thing is the installer. So now you have like extension specific installer. So all these great benefits are like added in the new SDK. So which is going to simplify your update and ongoing maintenance of experience and even the develop the core thing is the development experience. So that's a lot of key benefits and why you should like migrate to the new SDK. Okay. So with that, we'll get started. Yeah. And one other important thing is the old as the retail SDK will be deprecated in October 2022. So before the October 2022, you should migrate to the new commerce SDK to get all those additional benefits we talked about. So after 2022, the old SDK will not be shipped anymore or like serviced. Also the deployment for the, if you are like old ex extension running, it may, we may allow to continue to run for some time as an exception, but by October 2022, we want all the extension to be migrated. Yeah. So after October 2022, LCS will not allow you to deploy the old retail deployable package. All should be based on the new commerce SDK. So October 2022 is the deadline for migrating to the new SDK. Okay. Okay. So now let's get into the actual migration process. Okay, I'm ready to migrate. Like what are the sequence of steps I should follow? Okay. So first you need to set up your dev environment. Okay. To set up the dev environment, the way now we are recommending is using your own local development environment. If you want, you can provision a dev environment from LCS, but it's not like mandatory. You have to provision an environment in LCS and maintain a cloud environment. If you wish, you can set up all your yeah. development environment for commerce in your own machine or in your own laptop, or even you can deploy Azure VM and then do it. But in some cases, if you need SQL and other steps pre install you can still provision a LCS environment, but within that environment, you can set up the local development experience. <laughs> so it's, we also kind of automated it as much as possible. So if you just put update some configuration and press F5, everything will get like installed for you, including the retail server, the cloud point of sale. So you don't have to do more work on this space. Like just uh, for example, if you want to do a local development environment with demo data, just pressing F5 from the VS Code experience will do all the setup for you. It should take like less than a few minutes to set up a local development environment. Eventually in the future, we planning to deprecate the LCS dev environment. You love the LCS dev environment, but by default, there will not be any retail components. So you have to use the same experience, the local development experience documented here in this GitHub repo. So you can see the readme file, like how you can set up the environment in minutes. Yeah. You should follow the same process. 
uh, I think 10, 25 or 26, the LCS environment will not have, by default, it will not have any retail component. You will follow the pad, like steps documented here to set up the environment. Okay. Similarly, for the point of sale, there are some prerequisites. You can follow this dog and then set up the, install some prerequisite and you should be good to go to start with the development. Okay. Okay. Okay, and now I'm done with my environment. Okay, now I want to start the actual development, right? For that, either you need, you basically you need two things. One, I need the packages to consume. Say, for example, if you want to do a .NET development, you're going to go to Visual Studio, create a project, and then you're going to consume the .NET packages, right? What are the system attribute or what are the library? And similarly, exactly same model for the commerce development, both for POS and CRT. You're going to consume the packages Based on, say, for example, if your go live version is 10.25, you'll go to the new get feed the, from the public feed location. You'll use the new get manager and then download the uh, download or like put a packages config file in your project and consume the packages. Okay. So now you got the packages. If you're now understanding, hey, how will I do the actual development? I need to refer some sample. Then you can go to our samples repo in GitHub. So that is currently there is two repos, one for the cloud scale unit samples and one for the point of sale. When we mean installed, it's for all the components installed in the store, like the cloud scale unit self-hosted, your hardware station installer, your modern point of sale. And the scale unit is mainly for the cloud components. So your uh, commerce runtime, the headless commerce APIs, and then the CPOS cloud packages. So this contains samples for those scenarios. In some cases, the in-store may also contain the CRT. So we also included the commerce and time and headless commerce AP in this sample also. So based on your scenario, you can refer any one of this repo. Okay. So now the main steps of like, okay, and now I set up my environment. I got my SDK. Now I want to actually start my development, right? That's where the next step will start with the development. So one important prerequisite before you're going to start the development, okay? You need to uninstall the old, suppose if you're using NPOS, you need to uninstall, like if you're going to do a hardware station customization, you need to uninstall the previous installer you installed, okay? Because if you run for the new SDK, we also ship this new inst sealed installer. You can see it in the LCS asset library. So you can see something called like sealed. This is mainly for the new installer, okay? So you can start consuming these packages this installer for modern pause or the hardware station or for the cloud scale unit self host time. Okay. So you have to uninstall your previous installers and then install this new one. And you have to say, for example, if you're using modern pause, you want to like, you need to activate the app again. Okay. So this is like another prerequisite before you are actually starting the development, because if you install the both the legacy modern pause and the new modern pause, it's going to throw you an error saying like, hey, you have to uninstall the previous versions. So you have to uninstall the modern pods installed using the old installer. You should use the new sealed installers. Okay. So this table then quickly show you like what has changed in the SDK folder structure. Okay. Also the how the project types has been changed between the commerce and commerce and the retail SDK. Okay. So there are few important, there are a few other minor changes, but something to important ones to highlight. I will also in the next slide, we'll also cover the POS changes. Yeah. Okay. The first is the samples. So previously in retail SDK, we have the sample extension folder where we had like samples for the point of sale, CRT, retail server, and for all different components. Okay. Now all the samples are published to the GitHub, you can ask why the same, the big benefit is like the update, seamless way of to get the SDK. So a lot of benefits I talked about earlier. The one big change is the samples published to the GitHub. So instead of, um, there is no like retail SDK folder in the LCS VM anymore. So after some October, 2022, you will not even see that retail SDK folder. Yeah. The next one important change is the packages or the reference libraries. So previously we would have got that from the retail SDK reference folder or the packages folder. Now everything is available in the public feed and can be consumed via the NuGet manager. Okay. And after one big change is previously there is one bundled package called retail deployable package. Now it's more like so much more simplified and smaller packages by components. So you'll have a cloud scale unit package. 
which going to contain your headless commerce changes, the CRT changes, whatever your DB scripts, extension scripts, and then the cloud scale unit package. So it will be a lightweight cloud scale unit extension package. And then for all the other channel components, you have separate installers. So your modern POS installer or your self host uh, cloud scale unit self host installer or the hardware station installer. So this installer, are, it's only for your extension. It's not like a bundled installer. So you can independently deploy and service the extension. Similarly, independently, you can update and service the core out of the box product. Say you install the extension version A and, and install the out of the box 1025 package. Then if we release like a 1026 package from LCS for the out of the box product, you can just take it and run it. You don't have to like touch your extension or do any code mergers. So the installers are now like separated using the new installer framework. Yeah. Similarly, the updates. I think previously you will go to LCS and then there is update folder created, right? Within the retail SDK folder. Now it's all there is no like concept of the retail SDK folder anymore. You go to the to get the updated sample. You go to Git and do a Git pull to get the latest version. Or for the reference packages, you go to the new Git feed and just select the whichever version you want. Okay. So now let's talk about like how to migrate the commerce SDK. I'll just go at a very high level on this one. We'll do a deep dive for how to migrate the commerce runtime and the retail server extension in the separate session. Okay. But at a high level, it's very simple. Okay. First, you need to change your project type to net standard 2.0 or the later version. Not like all the latest version are supported. Maybe you can start with net standard 2.0. So you will edit your project file and then change the project type to this particular version. Okay. Next change you're going to do is like previously would have went to the added the reference from the retail SDK slash packages folder or you are added it from the reference folder, right? From the retail SDK. So you edit your project file and then change the packages feed to the public feed. Okay. So you can create your own new get config file and make sure your project point to that feed. So you update all your reference packages to be consumed from the packages feed. So rest all should work all your existing business. If you followed the best practices, all the existing business logic should work as well. So you don't have to do any other major code changes. If you followed best practice, it should work as well. like you don't have to do any code change. Similarly, this is for the CRT. Similarly, for the, if you created some headless commerce API, it needs a little bit additional code change. So previously would have extended from commerce controller. Now you will extend from this new I controller. And also you can remove all your EDM model changes and others. You can later uh, refer some of the samples in the doc or in the GitHub on how to do it. Similarly, no changes would be required on your channel database script. And hardware session also instead of extending from the hardware session controller class, you will extend from this new I controller. Yeah. So now let's talk about the point of sale extension okay now I, I understood about the crt now i want to know how to migrate my point of sale extension okay so previously in the point of sale extension you would have done there is a in the retail sdk there was a post dot extension project okay and then you would have added your extension folders and files to that project now there is no more such concept as i said as previously how you do .NET development, right? You're going to take your, create your new project template and add your extensions, right? Something very similar. You will create the POS project and then you're going to start adding your extension. So as I said, like previously, you will have POS app and extension project. Now there is no more POS app or extension project in the commerce SDK. So you will directly going to create your own extension. So we'll show all this, like exactly how it looks, the code by between the old SDK and the new SDK when Luke gonna do the deep dive, yeah. And the other one change is the POS API. So suppose in the old SDK for the POS, you'd have consumed the controls from the POS UA.SDK library. Now that library is obsolete. Instead of that, you're gonna consume it from the controls. The same controls, whatever you consume, like the data list controls or the other, kind of, you'll be able to use it. But only you're gonna, in the import attribute you added, so you're going to change instead of USDK library, you're going to just use this library. Yeah, that's it. You're just going to change from where you're going to consume the packages, the libraries. That's the only part you're going to change, but all the existing controls will like ship out of this new package here. 
Uh, then the other thing is the deployable package. Now for POS, there will be separate installer. For CPOS, it will be pack with, packaged with the cloud scale unit as I talked about earlier. Okay. So the next other topic, so that's high level overview of like, how will you do the migration? So you'll set up your dev environment to quickly to summarize. You'll set up the dev environment, consume the SDK, and then you understood like, hey, what I should migrate for CRT we talked about and for pause, what are the components changing between the old SDK and then the new SDK? So what are the projects I'm going to create? We'll do a deep dive in the uh, in the few minutes, like what are the projects you're going to create? Okay. So once that is done now, okay, my base template and projects, everything is ready. Okay. Now I have my code, my how do I going to move it to the new model, right? That's the next part of it. So I have created my template project. Hey, I don't want to like write the, all the logic again. I should be able to move it from the old SDK, right? So that's a part like we're going to cover here. So. For these components, there is no code changes. Say, for example, in the old SDK, so you created POS operations or triggers or like the overridden handlers or you consume some APIs, created some dialogues or controls, right? There, there is no changes. You should be exactly take those code change files and then move it to the new template project. Type. There is no code changes required. Unless in your view extension or custom controls, if you consume our control, then you just want to change instead of UA SDK you're going to now consume it from the POS API consume slash controls I showed in the previous slide, right? So that's the only change you're going to do. Most of the other things should work as well. So for all these components, there is no code changes. You should be able to copy those files and then move it to your new project templates. Next one is like what are the components which has been changed? Again, thing, I would say this is not like a big change. You're just going to change the import statement instead of the UI SDK, now you're going to use this one, POS API consume controls, okay? So it's like a very minor change. And one other important change is the consuming the knockout library. So we now separated like how you handle the knockout or any third-party library we consume versus the extension consume. So previously at the old SDK or like the old POS, uh -huh. there is a dependency like what version of knockout we use and what version the extension can use. Suppose, for example, we use, like, say, some X version, then you should also use the same X version, and there is, like, the global knockout object you would have consumed. Now, we want to give more power to the extension, so you can consume any third-party library for your UI rendering or, like, for any other dependency consumption. So you will manage your extension fully on your own, so you can use the different version of knockout, or if you want to use, like, I don't know, even, like, a React or some other library, you should be able to consume and do your UI work so you don't have any dependency. The primary advantage is like say previously when we change knockout version, it's going to impact your extension. Right? Now with this separation, so there is whatever changes we do will not impact your changes and also it gives you more power for you to like do whatever the UI libraries you want to use. That's other one big change. So if you used our global object, then you have to like Still, if you want to continue to use knockout, you can use it. Just you will add the knockout as a third-party packages dependency. I think there is a detailed doc on which is like how to consume knockout. So you can see that doc and then you can consume the knockout in your extension. And the next one is on the custom view. Okay. So suppose if you previously created a view, you would have extended from this custom view controller base class. Now like there is a different base class. So you should be able to extend from this class instead of the pre or the legacy class, the deprecated class. Yeah, that's how that change. No, no. All your business logic and everything should continue to work. Only the the class you extended or the interface you extended changed. Yeah. Okay. And one other thing we added for this new one is the new trigger. Okay. So previously there was something called like the extension .json file where you mention all your POS packages try to load for the point of sale. So the POS extension had something called that extension.json file where you would mention like, hey, these are my five different extension packages, like package one, package two, then loaded, right? POS go and during at the launch of the POS or at the runtime, it's going to check that extension.json and then it loaded the file. Okay. Now with the new model, that extension.json is gone. Instead, you will implement a CRT trigger called this get extension package definition. So you put a pre-trigger for this guy 
and then you're going to specify the what all the packages to load and this dll gets deployed to the retail server or your the cloud scale unit or to the cloud scale unit self hosted okay so how you what are the packages to load now instead of that extension.json it's going to come from this trigger for later we'll show a sample for all of this here yeah? that's other main change here yeah? so these are the components there is no code changes for some of these components if you are done you recall like some of it's like very minor small code changes yeah okay again for all of this one there is no change in your business logic or anything only the templates and few metadata is changed but all your existing code components should work as this because we one of our main goal was like we don't want you to like rewrite any of the extension so we want to be compact backward compatible as much as possible so now only like you're going to create the new template and then migrate it move all your extension code to this new model yeah these are the the next step is like okay i'm ready what all the project steps i'm going to create right so i think i covered this in the last session also so you can later refer it or like uh, check the public doc like what all the usage of all these different projects but at a high level you'll create an extension project okay the cs project where you're going to copy all your extension okay and then the next is the and the next is the modern pos package so okay now i have all my extension i need to for modern pos i need to create the apex file right the appx file that's how it get installed so this project is for that so this is the four things are the new templates you're going to create and then in all saying the extend pos dot extension project template you will take all your previous say for example if you are like operation triggers or whatever right you will move to this new you will create a folder within this project and then you got to add all of those here yeah? and similarly the first the extension project then the apex for the impos installation and then the third is the installer project the apex is bundled with the installer because the installer may need to deploy the your database or your crt offline changes or your hardware station package for the dedicated right so that's why we need a separate installer so which is going to bundle your apex as well as all the other components i said okay then okay Okay, now I, if you want to also deploy to the cloud scale unit your cpos package because the cloud pos your same pos extension can be packaged in two ways right either as a modern pos for the on prem components or you can also go if you are using cloud pos it need to be deployed to the cloud right so in that case you will use the scale unit project one extension project then that's your actual core business logic all your extension then the pos project for the apex and then the installer for the on prem it's going to take the mpos apex or the scale unit for the cloud yeah. okay so these are like the different project templates yeah. you're going to create for your pos extension okay so this i will hand it over to you who's going to go do a deep dive on hey, exactly how you can do the code sharing and different project types i talked about right so you will show all those in with a real end to end our like the famous store hours demo yeah yeah look back to you thanks for jonathan so as Mikhail yeah. said today, I'll be walking through the steps we use to migrate the store hour sample to the commerce SDK while still preserving retail SDK compatibility. Um, and please bear with me as I go through the presentation. I have a head cold and I may need to mute for a minute to clear my throat or grab a sip of water. So with that said, let's get started. So you might be asking. Why do I need to preserve retail SDK support? I thought commerce SDK is the future. And if you're asking that, you're right. Uh, but there are a couple reasons to maintain support for the retail SDK until October 2022. So the first of those being, uh, if you're an ISV, it's likely that all of your customers will not switch over to the commerce SDK and independent packaging model at the same time. Uh, so for the period between uh, when the first customer switches over to when the last customer switches over, um, it's likely you'll need to support uh, both packaging models. Um, and also, um, in case customers want to migrate um, their components independently uh, to minimize the risk. And if they want to migrate their commerce scale unit package components first, and then MPOS packages later, um, this would be another reason to support both packaging models um, in parallel. 
Um, and the third and last reason is to continue to be able to take updates through the retail SDK uh, while the commerce SDK migration is in progress. Um, and this could come up in a number of scenarios for hot fixing bugs or um, other sort of scenarios that you need to react to. Um, so that was a little bit about the why for supporting both the retail SDK and the commerce SDK at the same time. Um, and so now I'll go into kind of one approach of, of how to do it. Um, so the first thing that we would recommend would be to use, create a commerce SDK folder in the same repo as the retail SDK solution. Um, and these would both be at the root of the repo, um, but and totally independent of one another. Um, after that, after the folder structures are created, uh, the idea would be to move all of the source files to the commerce SDK folders and solutions um, and reference them uh, from the retail SDK projects. Um, and third would be, you know, the key is to make sure that there's no references from the commerce SDK to the retail SDK solution. Um, this will ensure that in the future, when there's no longer the need for the retail SDK, it's easy to remove it without any changes to your commerce SDK solution. Um, the benefits of, of this approach uh, would be that there's no need for code duplication in the extensions. Um, so both retail SDK and commerce SDK would be using the same version of the source files and that it gives us the ability to migrate uh, extensions for various components independently of one another uh, so that it doesn't have to be all done in one big bang. So now I'll quickly go through the four step process that we use to migrate the store hour samples. Um, the first step was creating the commerce SDK folder um, at the root of the retail SDK repo, um, and then updating that repo to isolate the retail SDK code. Um, the next step is actually migrating the CSU package components to the commerce SDK, uh, those being the commerce runtime, retail server, and channel database extensions over to the commerce SDK folder. Uh, third step is the same thing. Uh, but with point of sale extensions. Um, and then also with the point of sale extensions, we, depending on the type of extension, we may need to make a couple uh, runtime changes uh, so that the extensions follow the new model for the sealed approach. Um, and I'll go through more of that in the code later. Um, and then the last step is creating the installer and packaging projects in the commerce SDK. Um, this is the step so that we can actually create and then deploy the commerce SDK produced packages. Uh, this step could also happen after step two, if you don't have any point of sale extensions, or if you want to do the, uh, CSU extensions first, and then the point of sale extensions later in a separate release. <laughs> So with that, I will jump over to the code. Um, and so that was the high level kind of overview of the four step process. And so now I'm going to dive into the, the code here. Um, and so I'll start by going through the state of the retail SDK repo, um, prior to any commerce SDK migration. And so, um, that's going to be in the store hours start folder. Um, and that's basically just a copy of the retail SDK with the store hour sample enabled. Um, and then I'll kind of walk through the code changes in each step and showcase, uh, in detail, kind of the changes that were made to facilitate, um, the extensions working both in the commerce SDK and in the retail SDK. Um, 
we'll also share share the full uh, code for this scenario um, in the Yammer group, and we'll post a link to that after the uh, tech talk uh, through our kind of post tech talk email communications that we've been doing. Um, so with that said, um, I'll go ahead and kind of jump into the initial state just as a refresher uh, to see what it looks like when the store hour sample is enabled in, in the commerce or in the retail SDK. Okay, so the store hour sample is composed of extensions for four different components. Um, so the first of those being uh, commerce runtime. And so we can see here, this is the commerce runtime project in, in the retail SDK repo. Um, and then we also have the retail server project. It's going to do that. Yep, the same here. And you can see these are just vanilla projects. I'm mainly just showcasing it to show, you know, the different components that are included in the store hours sample. Um, and we can also see that if we go to the customization settings file, we have the commerce runtime assembly included, retail server assembly included, uh, proxy assembly, and channel database upgrade script also included here. Um, and if we go to the extensions JSON in the POS project, we can see that our store hour sample is enabled here uh, as well. So basically all of this to showcase kind of what it looked like to enable the store hour sample um, in the retail SDK. And then there was also um, the update to the the exe configs here um, that are also enabling that and so as a part of this migration there will be no changes needed for the customization settings file or the extensions json or any of the config files um, all of those kind of will be unchanged as we go through the following steps to migrate to the commerce sdk okay so with that behind us the first step was to um, create the commerce SDK solution and folder structure, uh, within the same repo. So I'll jump over. And so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm just jumping to a different folder, uh, which is a copy of this one, but with the, the steps with step one applied. So I'll jump over to my VS code window that has that open. Um, and we can see here as, whereas before we didn't have a separate folder for the retail SDK and it was all just at the root. We now have two root uh, folders, one for the retail SDK and one for the commerce SDK here. Um, so after step one, uh, the code in the retail SDK is unchanged. So we'll focus on the changes in, in the commerce SDK. Um, so starting with um, the NuGet configuration, I know that came up in the chat earlier. Um, so basically the configuration here is to add the nuget.config file next to the, uh, solution. And then we need to add this key here, um, which will make it so that nuget will pull from our package feed to download the packages during a nuget restore. Um, and then also on the topic of the nuget packages, if we go to one of our project files, for example, the commerce runtime one, we just simply need to add the package reference to the Microsoft Dynamics Commerce SDK runtime project or package. Um, so that's that's really it for the NuGet configuration. Um, for the JS proj, it is a bit more complex in that there's a packages config file, um, but basically this is just taking the place of the package reference that's done uh, in the CS project. So um, basically doing the same thing just with a little less functionality supported for JS proj, uh, but basically just declaring the dependencies in the packages config file. Um, so also in the commerce SDK uh, folder root, we have the customization package.props file. Um, and so, and this is the file that we're going to specify important information like, um, our publisher name, um, 
the package version, the package name is very important for loading POS extensions. Um, and all of this is documented on our docs page um, and goes into detail about the importance of each of these values. Um, but for the sake of time, I'll kind of move on. Um, so the one other thing that I wanted to note here was that even though there's a retail server extension for the store hours sample um, in the in the retail SDK uh, for the commerce SDK we do not have a separate project for retail server extension um, that we'll see it later but ultimately using the new eye controller approach um, the retail server extension will be included in the commerce runtime assembly okay I think that is all for step one. Um, I'll pause and check for any questions before I move on. No, 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 no we are good. I'm answering it in the chat here. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Bonnie. Um, okay, so then moving on to step two. Um, so we will go ahead and jump to that window here. Um, and actually, we'll jump over quickly before we move on from step one. Um, this is what the Commerce SDK uh, solution will look like after its initial creation in Visual Studio. You can see there's no source files here. Um, it's just basically an empty skeleton uh, with the projects we discussed. Um, so with that, we'll jump and see what it looks like after step two. Um, and so we can see the difference here. Um, there's now source files included uh, in the Commerce Runtime project. Um, so you can see our store hours data service here. Um, no changes in this file at all. It's simply cut and then paste into the Commerce SDK project folder. Um, so if I go here uh, and open that in the File Explorer, we can see all of these files were just copied over. Um, and exist kind of now they live in the commerce runtime project in the commerce SDK. Um, and then if we look, we've also, as a part of step two, moved over our channel DB upgrade script, um, which is also living within the um, directory structure inside of the commerce SDK repo. So the challenge here then is how do we continue to support the retail SDK once we've you know, remove the files from the retail SDK folder and move them to the commerce SDK folder. Um, so I'll switch to VS code here quickly and show kind of what we've done to the project files in the retail SDK to enable this. Um, so we can see here we're in the store hours project within the retail SDK folder. Um, and we've basically just gone ahead and added a compile linkage to all of the files in the commerce SDK project route um, so that basically it picks up any new files that are added to the commerce SDK CRT project will automatically be included here um, and will be compiled and included in the generated assembly uh, from the retail SDK commerce runtime extension. Um, and so basically that's it. Um, as far as compiling commerce runtime extensions, uh, that's all that's required. Um, from there, it's basically the output is the same and the rest of the process is the same for the CRT assembly and extensions. Um, the other change we can see down at the bottom here um, in this project file is we added a target to link um, the SQL script from the commerce SDK path to the uh, path in the retail SDK. And so because the retail SDK requires that all um, SQL scripts be in the, uh, the, what is it, database upgrade custom folder, um, what we'll do is we'll create a symlink um, from this, this folder to the actual location within the commerce SDK 
Um, and so that doesn't necessarily have to take place during the commerce runtime project build, but it seemed like a convenient location to generate that link to make sure it was there before packaging takes place. Um, again, I'm trying to go quickly through all of this, but it'll all be there um, in the document that we're going to give that gives the steps step by step, as well as uh, in the sample code that we'll publish to the Emmer group. Um, and then similar to what we saw for the CRT project, we will have the compile link include in the retail server CS proj uh, to link to the store hours controller uh, so that the retail server extension works as it did before uh, within the retail SDK. So really just some MS build linking um, and referencing of files outside of the project directory um, to make the retail SDK continue to work after the files were moved to the commerce SDK folder. Um, and after that, uh, everything else really is the same because we produce the same output assembly from each of these uh, CS proj files. Yes, if there's no questions there, I'll jump ahead so, to look we have a few questions can i read it out to you sure yeah so the first question is are there any project templates available or we have to create manually or copy over from samples um i'm gonna guess that we're talking project templates for the commerce sdk um and so for those i think there's, there's no templates available that we've um, created, but um, through Visual Studio, creating a C-sharp class library um, and then adding just the um, package reference um, should be a fairly straightforward step. And I know that we've included in our, our docs um, exactly how to do that. Um, and it'll also be included in the step-by-step -step guide document that uh, will present it or will ship out as a part of this, this sample distribution. Okay, thanks. So the next question is like, for every project, we have to have a part for the modern pause. Not really sure. Uh, I will repeat the question. Look for it. Yeah. So yeah. for every project, we have to have a part of, for the modern pause. For every project, we have to have what for modern pause? A part of it, or I'm not fully sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't know how to interpret that question. So maybe we can get yes, clarification maybe. and move on to the yeah. next. Yeah, if you can put uh, share more details about the question, it will be helpful. Okay, I'll quickly move to the next question. So this is interesting. Is store commerce package creation and MPOS creation the same in this new code migration? No. Um, so the store commerce code at, you know, the TypeScript in HTML, CSS, all the kind of extension code will be the same between store commerce and MPOS and cloud pos. Uh, however, the exact packaging and installation mechanism for store commerce um, may differ from what we have for MPOS and CloudPOS. Um, we're still kind of working to finalize that and it'll be something that is available as we move to GA with store commerce. So I guess good question, but still TBD and we'll make sure that as that becomes uh, clearer, we'll publish um, some documentation and videos talking about the store commerce packaging model. Okay. So look, maybe we'll take one other question. Okay. Both questions are related to the ISP packaging. I will quickly read it out. Okay. So how can we add multiple extensions? Do we need to add separate projects for each extension in the same solution, or do we need to create separate solution for each extension? I'll also read the next question, which is also something very similar on the same line. Okay. Hey, we have two ISP packages and also we have our own customer extension. Can we migrate only our extension and 
continue to use the old ISV extension or all the ISV extension and our inline, our customer extension all should go in the same time. Or like they have to co uh, with ISVs and do everything at one. So for that last question, I think the recommendation would be to do them all at once, at least from a component standpoint. So for commerce runtime, if, and all the CSU packaging, if, if the ISV solution isn't migrated, then I would, I would hold off on the customer extensions, but, um, I'll just say that kind of, we're, we're reaching out and trying to work with all the ISVs to make sure that we have the, their solutions available on the new commerce SDK packaging model. Yeah. Also, just to add to that, like, uh, can you also like drop me or look an email saying like which ISP you are working with? So because we are also like starting this process early with the ISPs too, as Luke mentioned, we want to have the ISP solution migrated to this new model as soon as possible. So please let us know your ISP name and the solution you are using from them. So we will also start the process with the ISP for migration. Yeah. So look on the second question, on the first question I asked, like, should they package, if they have like multiple extension, like how the solution should be structured, should they keep it as like separate installers or? Gotcha. So I would, um, my recommendation would be to have a separate solution and package for each extension package. So um, store hours is a good example of an extension package where it's delivering, you know, a complete set of functionality within that package, but it's composed of multiple extensions. Um, so basically I would think of it as kind of one-to-one -one between, um, extension packages and kind of feature sets, um, to solutions. And then if we had another extension that was say cross loyalty or extension package that was cross loyalty, that would be a different solution. Okay, so look, sorry, just one last question. Look, it is related to the one we had talked about before. So I will read out that question. So the screenshot where you had the breakdown of what is in the store sample, you are you have an entry for the modern boss in there as well. The one where you showed how it looked before and after you added the store sample CS code in there. Um. So are we talking for the initial skeleton? I think so. Yeah, yet also there is a modern pause. Yeah. So definitely in the conversion of the store hour sample, um, there's a modern pause project. Um, and that's going to be that, you know, produce an MPOS package and installer, uh, through the commerce SDK. So if I go to what the code looks like after step three, um, we can see that now all of the code from the retail SDK has been copied to the commerce SDK um, inside of the POS project. And then when I build this, it will go ahead and compile all the TypeScript and then it'll get packaged up inside of the MPOS app package using this project file. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Look. Sure. Um, so quickly, just in the interest of time, then I'll jump forward. Um, so I jumped to the code um, after step three, which was moving all of the source files from the retail SDK to the commerce SDK. Um, so this was a little bit more complicated to continue to support the retail SDK on the back. And so I'll switch, um, over and, and showcase that a bit. Um, what we have here is the POS extensions CS proj in the retail SDK. Um, and the, the first thing that we did here is we changed this enable default items to be true. Um, it was false in previous versions of the retail SDK. So what this will do is automatically include all items within the project file um, inside of the project. So previously where you had to explicitly include um, each file uh, to be compiled and picked up 
uh, within the CS project. Now this will automatically pick up all of those. Um, and so that just makes it simpler as we're trying to link back. Um, and then the next blob here is really just so that we don't include the sample projects. So basically by default that it still shows up with only our store hours sample um, in the project. We're just kind of going through and excluding all of the other ones. The effect would be the same if you wanted to just delete the other samples from your retail SDK folder if you weren't going to be using them. Um, basically gets the same result. Um, next step was to update the TypeScript version to match that of the Commerce SDK. Um, this way we can ensure that they're compiling with the same version of TypeScript and something that compiles in one won't fail in the other. Um, and so then there's a couple of other updates to the project file here. Um, I'll skip over them for now in the interest of time. Um, but ultimately the end result is that it'll link all of the files using um, make link in the directory link um, syntax from the retail SDK to the commerce SDK and it'll pick it up all the same as before. Um, and so if we go ahead and, and run just a directory diff on the deployable package after um, after building the old the original SDK without any changes and the new SDK, um, we can see there's a couple files changed, like the manifest is updated with some of the changes that were made as a part of the process, but it's largely the same. Um, and then all of the JS files here were slightly updated in the source code to follow the approach in the new model. Um, but that mo that approach will also work in the retail SDK um, as well. So the kind of updated approach for using knockout and consuming pause controls is supported in both the commerce SDK and the retail SDK. Um, and then if we go ahead and just quickly only look at files that are missing in one of the pa packages, we can see that the actual files included in each package are exactly the same, except for these two JS files um, that we added as a part of um, importing our own version of Knockout instead of consuming the uh, core Microsoft version of Knockout. Um, and the steps for that process are also documented on docs.microsoft.com. Um, so with that, I think we can take a couple more questions. I think we had to cut it a little bit short, um, but as I said, we'll produce uh, the step-by-step -step document showcasing uh, all the steps we did with more details. Um, and then we'll also share the, the code as well. So look, there are only two minutes left. Maybe should we finish the troubleshooting and then we can reply back to the questions later? Sure, yeah. Do um, you want to take that over? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Let, let me start presenting. Okay. Hope you all can see my screen. Yeah. So the last topic, I think we're almost on time. We want to cover is like how you will can troubleshoot your extension. Okay. The one simple way is like checking the logs, but also there is like other way where in uh, MPOS or the CPOS, you can use the JavaScript console and check the logs. Say for example, if I want to quickly show you, okay. say for example, in this case, I'm trying to activate, okay, I'm trying to get the store. Say for example, if I click retry, I also open the for the MPOS, you can install the Edge the developer tools, and then once you press F12, it will open this console window. So, for example, now if I click like retry, it's going to fail with some error, saying like, okay, the server is not responding or whatever. So, you should be able to see those clear error in the logs. So, the JavaScript console, if you click the console tab, you should see like, hey, why this request failed. Similarly, with the extension, if there is some issue in loading the manifest, 
or the package is not loaded correctly or some config is missing. So all those errors, you should be able to see it in the JavaScript console. And with that, you should be able to make necessary, take the necessary actions to fix the issue. Okay, that's one way. Or you can check the retail server. If it's a server error, you can check the retail server logs in the event paper. So then the other common issue will happen is like, now we introduce this CRT trigger, right? To load the packages. Okay, so many times we have seen so for example, in the CRT trigger, I given this package name, but all the packages will be load only with, with this name. So if there is like 10 packages, you should exactly match the package name you are given here. And then what you're given in the customization.prop. So if these two doesn't match, then the packages will not be loaded. Okay. So the other common issue going to be the manifest issue. So where in the extension manifest, you are not like properly formatted it. Okay. Similarly, the other issue will be like your, if you're not using the right version of the Windows, the UWP app need like a Windows Server 2019 or Windows 10, this pre-requisite is documented. Okay, so make sure you're using the right version and also check for the right cert you're used. Okay. The one other last thing we want to talk about is like the GitHub issues. So for example, if you have some quick dev issues or like with the samples or with the docs, or like the docs, you can also post issues here in the GitHub docs. So for example, there are some partners posted some issues. So we are also monitoring this one. Okay. Please don't ask like how to questions. Maybe some questions are fine, but in general, if you find any issues, hey, I'm stuck with this or those kind of issues, just please feel free to post it in the GitHub. We'll try to answer it. Yeah, okay. that's other new thing in the introduced. Yeah. So with that, we are almost at the end of the session. Okay. I know like we didn't answer a few Q and A definitely we will like last thing we will check all those questions and reply to you with the recording and then the answer for those questions in the PDF. Yeah. To end with the key takeaways is like the retail SDK is getting duplicated in October 2022 and this code sharing between retail SDK and commerce. If you want to maintain both versions for some amount of time, then you can do code sharing. If not, you can just like move to the commerce SDK. Also, like you have to plan about migrating to the new sealed installer. You have to uninstall the previous installer and also we recommend using the GitHub issue. You can still continue to use the support ticket and other models for something quick. You can follow the GitHub issues here. Okay. So these are the upcoming tech talks. I talked about the how to do the next talk talk. We're going to talk about the how to set up the packaging and build pipeline. We'll do a deep day one hardware station and commerce rent. And please feel free to register for this session. Yeah. So with that, we are at the end of the session and almost on time. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much for attending the session. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you both for your presentation. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We'd love to get your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. And last, a huge thank you to our presenters and to you audience for joining us today.